All right, so we've got our hull put together, sanded. Okay, We're looking pretty good. Again, I didn't do much work on that, but you're not going to see it, so really don't care too much. Um, we're going to put on next. We're going to put on um, a gray black undercoat. Um, pictures from the show showed the tanks were the the sand color more of a yellow than sand but a yellow sand mix and you can see the chipping underneath the tanks revealing a black dark gray undercoating so that's what I want to do so I'm going to spray give the whole tank a coat of that and then we're going to seal it up so we can do the rest but what we're using for that is we're going to use charcoal and black mix the two together two parts to one part then some windshield washer fluid, the blue kind, and then we're going to spray it. Okay, be right back. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to do. Um, this here is a Ferdinand elephant in 172 scale from Dragon Models. I built this uh, about four, maybe five years ago for a Kursk group build on an aircraft forum aircraft.net very very for aircraft guys if you're into forums stuff like that aircraft.net very cool they um these guys excel at their knowledge and their skills of building aircraft but anyway being the wise ass that i am i for this group build i decided to build a tank <clears throat> um what i'm getting at for this tank when i built this um these running board fenders here were a very thick plastic and my feeling was they were way way out of scale so to add some realism to it because as modelers you know most of us can't leave things as they are very rarely do we seem to build things out of box that's why we have group builds called out of box group builds where you can't do anything um, but to make the real make it more realistic to my eye um, what I did was I took a can like this and I replaced the fenders with the can and as you can see if you zoom in that is more realistic into scale than the thicker ones were and I don't have them anymore to show you how thick they were but rest assured if if they were on here right now in scale they would probably be like six or eight inches thick they were not armor plating, they were just sheet metal. So this makes, again, to my eye, more realistic. Now the key behind this really is it started here in the front. And that is if you talk to armor builders or tankers, if you have the privilege to talk to any tankers, these fenders very rarely survived. They were always beat up. If you look at pictures, World War II pictures, the fenders on the tanks were always destroyed by something or another. So getting using the ones from the kit wouldn't have done properly. It wouldn't look proper because you're going to bend, heat up and try to bend the thick plastic. And if you can even get it to bend properly, which you're not going to, it's going to be too thick, it's going to take so much heat, it's going to warp the plastic and it's just not going to look right. Not for metal. So I used the aluminum and I bent it into shape and I damaged it into something realistic from pictures that I found and that's what I've done. Um, <clears throat> on this side, it was a little cool because what I did, as you can see here, is I added the brakes along the way because they were sections. And again, from photos I saw, that was what I had seen, so I did that and again, it adds a little bit more realism. So now, that said, getting back to our patent tank, our German patent tank, um, I want to screw up and destroy these fenders. And again, if you look here, they're kind of thick. All right. I don't want to go crazy, but <clears throat> I want to mess them up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the old tried and true method of using a can. I've got this Arizona can that's been sitting on my desk. Um, it's already been used for other builds that I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm going to use this as my resource. And I gotta go out and look first because I don't have any pictures 
I haven't looked for any pictures yet for the patent. I want to see how they are. But basically, we're going to cut off this forward facing fender on both sides and we're going to replace it with. Oh, yeah, got the ones on the back too. Okay, so I need to find some really good pictures and we're going to replace these with the aluminum. All right, now the key for me also, as I'm noticing here, is this fender is formed right into here. Okay, it's not a very thick piece, which is really good. I'm not going to replace this whole thing, but <clears throat> I have to find a way that I'm going to be able to form this new fender onto here because there's not going to be, once I cut this off, there's not going to be a lot of um, surface to mount it to directly this way. So that should be a little bit of a challenge. But that's where we're going. Um, stay tuned. Alright guys, welcome back. Um, as you can see here, we got our first fender done. Um, here's the original. It had an angle as such on this replacement. What we did is we cut out a piece of the aluminum can, okay, cut it to size, and then to get it to mate up to the existing fender, never fails. To get it to mate up to the existing fender, um, again, there was very little material to, to glue onto. So what I have in my stock of Evergreen is I have these little I-beams, okay? So what I did, making believe that this is the mating surface okay just make believe what I did is I cut this down to the size of the fender and I glued it like as such like this and that created an area for me to glue to so I glued the fender directly to the styrene and I can adjust depending on how I placed it in the groove I can adjust the angle this one I wanted bent in a little bit so it's a little angled in more than the other one it's got a dent in the in the edge here um, a little crinkled here uh, bulged out this with styrene okay so I'm going to do something similar similar to this one actually I'm not sure I think I'm getting lazy already and I might leave this one the way it is looking at the movie tanks in both Rap Patrol and the um, Patton, a lot of them weren't really damaged. But then again, it was a different model of the Patton. They had the more rounded fenders. I'm not sure if that's an earlier version or a later version. But again, for this, it's close enough. So um, <clears throat> Next, we're going to move on to the hull of the tank and the turret. And well, actually, turret, hull, and then turret. And what I'm getting at here is this. This part of the hull here and the bottom is very smooth on this model. The turret is also very smooth, and it should have a texture to it. It's a forged uh, or cast parts, and they had a texture. They weren't smooth. So... In order to get that um, that texture, I'm going to try something that is very very similar to what uh, you would do if you're doing a, a vinyl top on a car. Okay, I'm going to be using an older brush, and what I'll do is I'll dip it not only in if you're doing a vinyl top, you're going to dip it in your paint, and you can stipple it along and do that over a couple periods of time, and you're going to have a vinyl looking top. In this case we want that um, that cast look. So what I'm going to use is this Mr. Surface 500. I'm going to mix this up really good, use my brush and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a pattern all over this and we're going to recreate that texture and we're going to do the same thing to this, which is going to be a lot because it has to go all over the damn thing. So that's going to take a little while. So bear with me. We'll be right back.
All right, so what I'm doing here is just like I explained earlier, I got a nice stiff brush. I've got my Mr. Surface 500 over here. Put some on the brush. You don't have to do it too much. And just start dabbing. Now when you first dab, you've got these heavier areas here. But if you just keep going, and you keep running over the area again and again, eventually it'll even out and it won't be so heavy. Okay. And if you look, get this lighted right. Now it's not a full covering yet, but if you could see, I'm starting to get that textured finish over top of it. So we're just going to keep doing this. Oops. until we have it built up the way we want it. <clears throat> cool? Hang on, we'll be right back.